something happened. Something. Yeah. Is loud? Yeah. I turned mine down. I have to do it on my phone because I have this down here and it wasn't charged. Oh, yeah, I didn't know where, where that was. I thought you kept taking it home. I did, and then I was using it this morning when I logged in. So. All right, I'm going to go share. Uh, I'm going to change the video. Oh, yeah, put it down on this. I can see where we are. George, George, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I just was wondering what the gain, like what should, Rob told me to put that on like five. Does that seem on the iRig? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, gain, G-A-I-N. On the iRig, do you know anything about that? No? Test, test, test. I feel like I can't hear myself. Okay, perfect. I'm just on Melissa's headphone. So yeah, I'm on the app right now, but I have the iRig in. So yeah. Okay, perfect. It seems like when I talk on this microphone, like I can see it turning orange. So does that mean it's too much? I should turn down her microphone some? The iRig. That's okay. We're good. If we sound good, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You're going to be out. Oh, no, you won't. You'll be fine. The intro is almost over. I know. You're going to start it? Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Where's Steve? And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Um, this is the McNamara Broker Team. Um, I am Mary Baker, and I'm joined in studio here with uh, our lovely team lead, Sharon McNamara. Hello, how are you? You haven't been with us for the past couple of weeks, huh? I only missed last week. I've been here. With, I was here with the mold guys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You are. And um, no, I wasn't feeling great last week, so I just I played it a little safe and mm -hmm. worked from home for the week. Yep. We um, had the mold guys here. That worked out good, and we had a lot of our listeners listening in to our mold people, and they've gotten quite a few phone time. calls. Yeah, I actually saw Jake this week as well, so uh, that worked out well. We also have Melissa Baker. No, Melissa <laughs> Baker. <laughs> Melissa <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> 
That's me. <laughs> so it's so funny. I did a mixture of the two of you, but you're Melissa Wallace. Of I course. am. I'm going to marry into the family. Today I'm Melissa Wallace. <laughs> you are the one and only Melissa Wallace. I told you I got maybe three hours of sleep last night, but I'm not going to mm. dwell on that too much. Um, but it is exciting to be here again. And we have uh, one of our favorite co-hosts with us. And I love that like sometimes he'll be listening because he's usually out on the road or probably on his way home and he'll listen in and he'll send us little text messages or whatever, you know, to give us little tidbits. Little. So why don't you do the, the honors of introducing our main man here? Well, I was going to say we have the lovely, but we have the very <laughs> handsome um, <laughs> Steve Cook from Imperial Inspection Services joining us via Zoom tonight. Hey, Steve. Well, thank you, Mary. You're making You're me uh, blush over here on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't tell it all. That beautiful house behind you. Yeah. Um, I, I love your background, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, they made me sit out in the backyard tonight, so no. <laughs> <laughs> it must be warmer wherever that is because yeah. I'm freezing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was windy as anything last night. I mm -hmm. thought the Christmas tree in our little blue truck was going to tip over last night, but I got here this morning and the, the star was a little crooked. So I got up there and fixed it and all is well. I wonder what people think when they drive by our office and you're like up there fully done up, <laughs> fully done up, like, oh, let me just heels. fix the, the star or marks on the roof or mm -hmm. like, I feel like everyone's like, oh, what are they up to now? Yeah, these people never stop. Yeah, yeah. That, that, it seems like that. But we've gotten a lot of compliments on our truck that's outside and it's marks for those of you who aren't familiar. Um, my husband, Mark McNamara of McNamara Plumbing has a 1936 Ford pickup that he got oh, a year ago. He got a Christmas time last year. And I can't remember what state it came from, but it's beautiful and it came blue and we had a big event last weekend or the weekend before with mm -hmm. Santa visited us and we had all kinds of, and we took pictures on the back of the truck. So you can go on to our uh, Boston Connect real estate page and see some of those pictures. But Melissa, tell everybody about like the post about the little blue truck and what happened today. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm actually just waiting to hear back from one other person to get permission. We, we like to get permission from, uh, from, from moms and dads and anybody uh, before we post pictures of kids. But um, we've been posting some sort of behind the scene photos of our event here. We did um, pictures with Santa and we still have letters to Santa. So you have until the 17th of this month to write a letter to Santa and drop it on our special mail mailbox here at our office at 19 Mattachusett Street in Pembroke. Uh, we have a direct link to the North Pole. So um, and you might just get a letter back from Santa too. But we had two families actually stop by today to take pictures with the truck because we have it decorated outside still. Um, hopefully we're going to have that through Christmas, but that's up to Mr. McNamara. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but we've had some people see our posts on social media and they're listening to the show and just sort of hearing and seeing that, you know, we have this really great truck out front and we've been decorating the, mm -hmm. the office um, so people can come by and take pictures on the truck and um, come in and write a letter to Santa or mail their letter to Santa. Um, so yeah, we were like exciting. It, we were excited. You, I you had guys, like so many candy canes to give these kids today. And like I walked in and I think Sharon or or uh, Kristen Hellout, who is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, um, would say like, oh, I feel like you think that it's Halloween. Like you're just like giving away yeah, uh, all, all this candy. Um, but, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun to, to see the kids and they were so excited. And, um, one of the kids, uh, they, they actually came all the way from Quincy, uh, to take some pictures, but, uh, one of the kids, his favorite book is the, what is the blue truck, big blue truck, a little, 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 little blue, blue truck. truck. Um, so he's going to come back and take pictures with his, with his book on the blue truck. So, um, that's, that's, what's <laughs> fun to me. I don't, I don't, you know, that was the highlight of my day. Yeah, you guys are very excited. The, I was, on the, I was on the phone and like the whole entire office erupted because this family came to take photos and it, it was adorable, but um, yeah. So do we want to, so that was wonderful, but do we yeah. want to chat a little bit about what we're going to be talking to Steve about tonight? 
Yeah. So, um, Sharon, I think you were watching a commercial or the wood news or something about you know, learning about home energy or. Yeah, something came on. Well, we've been seeing a lot of, if I see Nancy Kerrigan one more time, I mean, she's very lovely, but, um, that commercial that she does, um, resolve, revolve something, whatever it is. Why don't I see these commercials? I don't know. It's like a mass save program. Oh. So I don't know. I saw the commercial or something this morning and I thought, well, this is a really timely time of year for us to sort of discuss heating and energy and saving on all of that, especially where we hear that the cost of oil is going up, the cost of gas, electricity, all of that is going up. So how are, can we come up with some tips for people to save on their energy bills this winter? And as I was watching the commercial, they were talking about insulation and it just brought me back to the one big thing that Steve taught us. And now it's like sort of an obsession as I drive down. I the know street. exactly what it is. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, know. I know exactly what it is. So uh, maybe we'll save that little tip for a little bit later. But if you're driving here hey, and you know what, if you know the answer, why don't you call in? Do we have any gift cards? We must have gift yeah, cards. Of course. So we have gift cards. If you call in 781-837-4900 and you know the answer to this question, then I want you to call and, um, you know, George will pipe you through to us. If you're driving down a neighborhood and all of the houses have snow on the roof, and then you come upon one that doesn't have snow on the roof, what does that tell you? What does that indicate? So if you know the answer to that question, call 781-837-4900 and uh, you'll win what a $25 gift card. We have Dunkin' Donuts and a yeah. lot of the things. So yeah, won't that be fun? Yeah. So anyways, I texted Steve early this morning and I said, Hey, any chance you want to join us on the radio show tonight? And he said, great. He said, sure. And I said, great. Cause I'm calling in at the radio at eight 26 this morning <laughs> with a promo. So that's how we came up with this topic. So energy and how to save some buckaroonies this, this winter. Everybody's looking to save a buck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So do you guys want to take the lead here and get some questions out there? And let's see what tips uh, Mr. Cook has from us. Again, we have Steve Cook from Imperial Inspection Services with us tonight. He's our one and only uh, inspection guy, really. Yeah, really. Well, really. <laughs> number one, number one, we recommend. Um, I guess so I could sort of just start off with asking Steve. I mean, you have done what probably feels like a million home inspections, you know, when you show up to a house, I mean, what are some indications that, you know, you know, right off the bat, if a house is, you know, energy efficient or not? Well, usually uh, the main thing is, um, you know, when you're say, if it's like, you, know, you guys were touching base earlier on uh, snow on the roof and things like that. Um, you know, a lot of times if you don't find, you know, you go down the street and everybody has like uh, three, four inches on their roof and all of a sudden you go by our house and it's kind of scattered or, you know, mismatched on the amount of snow, you usually find those type of houses that are poorly insulated. Mm -hmm. And especially capes, you'll look at a cape style home and you'll see like the top uh, two thirds of the roof probably has six inches and the bottom, you know, uh, third has no snow at all. And that usually means the eaves are not insulated as well as they should be. And you have a tremendous amount of heat loss uh, coming you know, through that area. Because if you remember heat, usually about 90% of it goes up and you have about 10% loss you know, through the walls of a home. Interesting. So um, I was just thinking, so Mass Save is, is a program like the energy efficiency. I don't-, I don't That's one I of your know. biggest and uh, free you know, resources for, uh, you know, getting some sort of home evaluation for energy efficiency, recommendations to upgrades, and sometimes they actually have programs where they can uh, either finance or give away something on there. And, you know, if you go to the uh, computer, uh, masssave.com, or they have a, they do have a phone number, it's 1-866-527-7283. Again, 866-527-7283. Seven two eight three, and if you give them a call, they can let you know, you know, schedule them to come out to do a, you know, an energy audit on your house, and mm -hmm. uh, what may be available, you know, for upgrades or making the house a little bit more efficient for the season. Um, Sharon, when uh, she was looking up some sort of uh, websites for um, efficiency and, and sort of getting rebates and stuff, she came across Energy Sense. Are you familiar with that? 
Um, it's uh i think it's you can get to it from mass.gov i think that's how i got to it but it's called energy sense like as in like one cent i owe you one cent uh commonwealth energy tool for savings and it gives a whole entire list of um you know any appliances you might have or anything in your house that you might be able to get a rebate on for, for energy purposes so that'd be good yeah, because you look oh, at oh. a typical refrigerator, you know, if it's more than 10 years old, the new ones that you buy today, you know, yeah. save a tremendous amount of energy. Yeah. Um, Steve, we actually have a caller. Jake is on the line. Oh, I can hear a dial tone. Um, George, is Jake still on the phone? might have lost him we might have lost him but okay so uh, yeah so they have there are a lot of resources out there when i was researching earlier um there are a lot of resources out there oh hi jake jake is back jake is back jake can you hear us you're on air Uh, okay that's all right jake if you're um, out there and you want to call back we're still here yeah there are a lot of websites out there that that, that you can sort of uh find if you can even like light bulbs and stuff i feel like you can there's well, rebates so on that's um, what massive came and did for us so they actually came to our house and they did all of our light bulbs they gave us led you, Tom, and so, you know sometimes they'll yeah. even update thermostats inside of a home all depends uh you know yeah. what they have for in the budget and for what they have for features or uh, you know different programs for that actual month on there well i feel like one of the most common things so is mass save going out and doing extra insulation so where we're talking about like the snow on the roofs and heat loss just for natural heat loss um through the eaves I would say one of the most common things that I see Mass Save come out and do is insulate properties. So like insul they, they'll do spray foam and all of those little tiny itty bitty holes. Like I have an old field stone foundation. They come, they would come through and insulate all of those cracks. So no mice get in because that happens. Um, yeah. But the other- But Zoe wants to catch them. So yeah. the other got a that typical home that's a probably between 10 and 15 years of age. Uh, the most uh, efficiency that you can pick up is if you go downstairs in the basement, just where your foundation, the outer portion of your house, joins up with the framing of the house where the sill is. If you were to insulate around the outside perimeter, you know, if you were to buy, say, a roll of, if you're handy, you know, buy a roll of uh, fiberglass, cut little 16 to 18 inch uh, sections and tuck them in at the end of the floor joist bays where it joins up with the outer wall, you'll find that the uh, basement will stay probably about 10 to 15 degrees uh, warmer during the winter time and it'll probably save you about a hundred dollars off your heating bill you know at the end of the season interesting i might get sam on that because our the old part of our basement is just horrifying right. <laughs> horrifying you know, it might... house, so it's very porous in there <laughs> yes yeah we have to work on our energy efficiency so i'm very intrigued with what we're going to talk about today we have to and get one a thing i found is with some of the new energy efficient light bulbs uh, and I did this, this happened to me personally is I got some of the new LED type bulbs and I put them in my garage door openers and what happens is there's I guess transistors in them and sometimes they can interfere with using the clicker in your car to open and close your mm. uh, garage door opener and it took me about three months to figure that out and the bulb burned out so it didn't work all of a sudden my garage oh, door opener was working great and then I just went back to a different style bulb that was inside. But some of those new bulbs, if you updated them inside your uh, garage door openers and your garage door opener doesn't work as well as it worked before, you may want to change the bulb to a different uh, style. Interesting. Yep. Hmm. Okay. There's always, well, to every, um, what yeah. causes a reaction or to every step is a reaction, like everything changes, you know? What right, that it was real strange, yes. Yeah, cause and effect, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So moving through the house. So what are some, when you're doing a home inspection, I mean, you're not, are you doing like sort of an energy testing as well? Or is it just sort of like, here's some observations that I've had, you might want to be able to look at that. Or is there some sort of different testing besides a home inspection that you can do in order to, to look at the, the energy? that's in your house it's part of a say a home inspection in massachusetts it's not required to do energy efficiency or drafts and so but a lot of the inspectors today they carry what they call a fleur which is a which fleur? is stands for a forward-looking infrared and it's a little mm -hmm. handheld device 
And if you put it on a window, it will show you a picture of the window inside the computer screen and then through different colors and where the little cursor is, it will tell you, um, you know, if, there, if there's any air infiltration. So during the winter time, if we put it on a window and it turns purple, that means you're getting a lot of cold infiltration through that window or say where the baseboard joins with a uh, floor or a mm -hmm. door. And you know, that's an area either, you know, you should do an upgrade or some additional line. Uh, insulation or weather stripping in that area. That's where it tells you where you're getting the significant amount of uh, drafts. And the same in the summertime, if we have the AC running and you know, you get in the sun or you're getting a you know, good breeze on there with the floor, all of a sudden you start to see the areas to be yellow to a reddish to a pink. And that usually indicates uh, air infiltration from the outside. When I was doing my research earlier, uh, I, it, is that like thermography scan? Is that what it's called? It's almost like, it's similar to it. We, they do, we do have the uh, thermometers where you can just, you know, put them on the wall and it puts a little red dot. Mm -hmm. But it kind of lets you know about the size of a nickel, what the temperature is there. Yeah. So that's good for testing like a baseboard heat or an air duct coming out of the ceiling or a burner at the stove. But the floor... That's a little bit more of an expensive uh, piece of equipment. And I've seen this in action with you, have a broad I? area of maybe like uh, five foot at one time. And it kind of lets you know where the heat's coming, you know, any heat loss or cold infiltration to the home. Is the scan more of like to know if you have poor insulation? I kind of let you know where the drafts are and mm -hmm. it has a potential for poor insulation or insulation that got forgotten or got wet and it settled down. Okay. Okay. Interesting. You learn something kind of you in the right day. direction. And you're having a like problem an over there. for your house. You should have someone take a look at it and maybe get that sealed up a little okay. bit better. Um, oh, we have another call. Is it Jake or is it somebody else? Maureen. Maureen. Oh, okay. Maureen. Are you there, Maureen? Can you hear me? Hi, Maureen. How are you? Oh, Marie. Sorry. I had uh, my, my headphones are <laughs> really low. <laughs> um, what is your question? Yeah, it's not coming through oh. here. Oh, you, you know the answer. Yes, so so pretty much exactly, and I don't think Steve's getting a good feed um, I am not, no. from you, but yes, so that is what Steve has actually taught us over the years is kind of if you're driving around and see that, you know, everybody else is kind of has three feet or three inches of snow and you have nothing or the house that you're looking at has nothing on there, then it's likely that you're losing heat either via the eaves or potentially through the pull down attic. Yeah, or just poorly insulated. Maybe only have an inch or two inches up there where your neighbors may have six to 12 inches of uh, insulation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was spot on. So Marie, if you actually stay online, George will grab your contact information so we can send you out that gift card. Thank you. Oh, thank you for listening and thank you for calling. I also got a text. Oh, oh thanks, you Marie. Did. Appreciate it. Yeah, I actually, I was over there. Um, I got a text too, and he, there was a person, it was um, John Malloy. I think it was John Malloy um, that sent me the answer as well. So mm -hmm. I said, oh, can you call in? So he may be calling in as well. Okay. So um, Gift cards all around. We're giving gift cards to it's anybody and everybody. Giving. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to contact us, we'll, we'll give, give you a, a gift, gift card. card. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I got your message, Sharon, and uh, okay. that should be fine now. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, are there any other tests that you can do inside the house to see if, you know, your house is energy efficient or do a heat assessment in your house, maybe personally, or if you can hire somebody that's a professional? Yeah, you know, they have mass save come through, and what they'll do is they'll set up a fan unit at your front door and seal it up, and then they'll run that fan, and that actually tests for any air infiltration or any leakage into the home. And that's a first step on getting the house a little bit more efficient. How important would you say it is to kind of be taking these steps? I know it's like a snowball, right? So if everything, you know, you have leaky windows and poor insulation and draft, uh, drafty foundation, or, um, you know, if there's a bunch of different pockets of infiltration of 
air. Obviously, the house is going to burn through fuel and gas and everything more quickly. It's going to be harder to heat all of that. But how important would you say or what would be the number one thing that you would make sure that you would do? I would say attic insulation. As I was saying earlier, like 90% of your, you know, your heat goes up and 10% goes out. So you're going to get more, more bang for your buck by doing the uh, attic area first and then kind of branching out from there. So if you don't have the money to, you know, throw three, four to six hundred dollars, you know, per window, uh, that's a good place to start. And then the other is usually getting your system tuned up and you usually do it between September and October. That way you pick up the optimum efficiency for the season you're going to be, you know, relying on it the most. So it's going to be in tip top shape for the most, uh, you know, amount of money that you can save. So like have your burners and your furnaces serviced like right before the winter season. Exactly. That way, if there's any clogs or anything like that, or any adjustments that need to be, you know, made to make it run efficiently or more efficient, uh, that's the time to do it. That's a good point. Mm. I we we have a gas boiler, so I don't know that we ever really service it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's about every three to five years, you want to get that cleaned and serviced. In oil, you want to do that every year because there's a nozzle, a filter, okay. and stuff that needs to be changed inside. Yeah, I knew about oil. I just wasn't sure on gas. So Mark McNamara, you're going to have to come over to my house if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to call somebody uh, because I was upstairs the other, I haven't been sleeping well. I think I said that earlier, but I'm sleep deprived. So I don't know what I said, but I, I can smell oil in my house. Like when I'm in my living room and I keep on complaining to Mark and I keep on telling him the reason why I don't work out is because my Peloton is next to the boiler. <laughs> Um, but we have oil. <laughs> yeah. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> and it smells like I can smell it. But he said that that had something to do with the damper being open, maybe. And something was, I don't know, the smell was coming up because our <laughs> Steve helped me. <laughs> yep, sometimes, if you know, sometimes you have something in the house that creates a negative air pressure, say like get your, um, you know, above your stove, if you have a, a fan unit that vents to the outside, and especially this time of year, you have the house all closed up and you turn on that type of vent, that will create a negative air pressure inside the house, depending on how well that unit ventilates. And sometimes it can draw actual uh, soot back in through the system. It doesn't mm-hmm. happen too often, but if you have a really tight house, sometimes bathroom fans can cause it, you know, also if you get like, you know, two or three of them running at the same time. Why would it happen through my chimney? So if the damper is open, because this, the chimney it would be separate flues. Yeah, they're separate flues. So I, I mean, I smell it very strong. Like it makes me sick. Yeah, sometimes it will go right by the flue on the top and then get drawn back into the house. Okay. You know, through the uh, you know fireplace, you know, one, even though it's going up a separate one to the exterior. So it's like when it gets to the outside, that's when it... Yeah. That's the negative. Sometimes, you know, I don't know if your damper's closed, but close your damper, that's probably the first... Uh, yeah, that's you know, what he always does. Yeah. Down. Yeah. So Mark, so Steve just said Mark's right. So you have to go home and apologize. <laughs> no, well, I still smell it when I'm downstairs. That's why I haven't been working. Mark is texting me now. It's just tell her this. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you're> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, no, but sometimes, you know, if, if, it, if you do get that odor, see if you're running a fan inside the house, either above the stove or a bathroom one. And if you're getting it during that time frame, uh, that's probably what's causing it to happen. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Because I remember too, I mean, it hasn't, I think it happened to us once, or maybe it was at one of my listings or something that somebody's furnace or boiler actually backed up and the oil was like all over the place. Like you could see like out of the registers and stuff, like it was just. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's usually bad heat exchanges or something a clogged in the chimney and you get all that backdrafting and you get a lot of black soot inside the home. And that's terrible to have that happen. Yeah. That is not good. All right. Um, I sort of just jumped in. So I'm going to let you guys sort of continue on with your lead here. You're doing a great job. Yeah, I mean, I have a list, but I mean, I feel like we've sort of gone over a lot of like yeah. the the windows, doors, walls. That's sort of the things that I was concerned about. The attic. Um, you were we talked we that. talked about light bulbs a little bit. One thing that I don't think um, people realize is such an energy suck, and I'm finding this out um, is older appliances. So I have a refrigerator in our garage that's from like 1989. It's as old as me. Like it's old. Um, and it's, it sucks a lot of power. It sucks a lot of yeah, energy. It probably costs 30, 30 to $40 a month just to run that puppy. Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so but I can't one, justify it to that. Sam to buy a new, a new refrigerator. He's like, right. no. Well, if he's listening tonight, he will. 
Yeah, there you go, Sam. We could save money by buying a new refrigerator. And if it's just going in your <laughs> kitchen, I mean, not going in your kitchen, it's just going in your garage. You could go to like a dent place, you know what I mean, and get one. Yeah, just a little one. And that's one of the things I think you said earlier. It's our drink fridge. Yeah, on mass.gov, they have so many rebates that are listed there. And it, some of them are like for dehumidifiers, refrigerators, washer dryers, mm -hmm. um, heating systems. So there are a ton of rebates on there. So you can get some rebates. But we got our electric bill yesterday and I immediately went online and paid it because I was like, don't tell national grid, but I think they made a mistake. <laughs> it was like $255 or something for my electric bill at the house. And I was like, Mark, our electric bill is only $255. Oh my gosh. Like losing electricity for four days. I guess that's what that really helped you. <laughs> <That really helped. laughs> but normally in the summer, my electric bill, take a guess, Steve, what my electric bill is. And well, about $400 if you're running the AC and you have the pool going and all that other fun stuff. Yep. Well, that was a very good guess. We had one bill almost $800 this summer. Wow. What month was that? Must have been July or August, maybe August, because July was awful yucky. But um, yeah, so we have the AC. We never shut it off. So once I put it on, I really never shut it off. We have the pool going. We have the refrigerator in the pool going. We have a freezer downstairs. And then my mother loves to do laundry. So like my washer and dryer are going around the clock constantly. So yeah, that seems astronomical though, doesn't it? it that sounds like a lot because you know my house is similar to your size and during the summertime it gets close to $300 because you run the AC from you know the end of June all the way to the end of August. Mm -hmm. off. But we don't yeah. have a pool or anything like that. Yeah, I think it's the pool maybe. Well, you know what Sam would say for energy efficiency? Solar panels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a big proponent of solar panels. Apparently I'm getting them. What are your <laughs> thoughts on solar panels, Steve? What was that? What are your thoughts on solar? Ah, uh, they're good, but this, they seem to be very expensive to introduce to the home. And, you know, some of the newer programs that are out there don't seem to be as well as, you know, for recovering money or getting money back as, you know, programs that were almost 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. it's almost like they're just leasing a spot on your uh, roof and yeah. that's what you have there and then i see a lot on the real estate transactions you know all of a sudden the roof is you know needs to be replaced and now you got to hire that company to come out and you know remove all those panels put them in your front yard wait for the new roof to be put back on and then have the panels reinstalled you know and, and you know at a uh, cost you know mm -hmm. adding to the actual uh, roof replacement on there yeah. And uh, for me, I just don't think that they're very appealing to look at, but I guess if you're in your house, you're not the one looking at them, but I figured I will get them when they're about the size of a wallet. Right. Cause they're coming out with new shingles. They've been yeah. out for like five years now. The actual shingles oh, are actually solar uh, panel, you know, actually solar generating uh, shingles on the house there. Mm -hmm. And I guess they're still in like in the trial phases now, but you know, a lot of some of the panels that I see up there, there's a lot of collection of debris underneath the panels which mm. is there and just, you know, if they're not maintained and cleaned underneath, you know, I, I see things on home inspections that well, it's going to be Sam's a job, lot of, you know, concerns, you know, to the actual roof covering, not so mm -hmm. much to the panels. Yeah, because I can imagine, I mean, when you are doing an inspection, I mean, you can't do a thorough inspection of what the roof condition is. So like you can't oh, really I see under them in the attic uh, you know and see what you have for water stains and then the other is uh you know looking inside on the um, you know top floor of the house looking for any water damage on the uh, ceilings up there mm -hmm. you know, you know Interesting. A lot of times you... up there and the people putting the solar panels on not all the companies but some of them don't take in regards that they don't want the roof to leak afterwards and they're just errantly you know just putting screws and lag bolts and stuff that's and, what i'm scared of truthfully i was going to say how often the, do I you walk see in the that? attic and i see these things just coming mm -hmm. through the roof and no sealant on the outside and, yeah you know okay unfortunately you know i've seen some really good installs so it's like anything you get good and bad uh you know and i just think you know, by the time you finish paying for it i don't know does it really make a difference i know we just had a client that sold this year and it was like a $25,000, $30,000 investment. I think it's very much a long-term investment. So if, yeah. you're, if you're looking at it, in my opinion, and I haven't really researched it all this all that much, it's Sam's baby at this point, um, but I would be putting it on a new roof so that the life of the panels and the life of the roof should 
match or should be similar um, so that you don't have to worry about removing the panels like um, Steve mm -hmm. is saying here and then replacing the roof on top of it. And it would be a long-term investment. Yeah, because one you of know, our neighbors uh, cut me about a mile down the street. He has panels that he put on probably 15 years ago, and it was a different type of program back then, and they're all paid for. So he's just taking the, you know, reaping the benefits of it. And his electric bill is like $50, $60 a month, and he just runs everything. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, the, you go, go to his house when the power does go up. Fed back into the, you know, into the grid there is amazing on that. But he was under a different program yeah. back then you know, with the rebates and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know anything about solar panels, but if you uh, want to join in on our discussion tonight with Steve Cook, you can give us a call at the studio, 781-837-4900. You can shoot share in a text too, 781-294-4848. Um, and, and sort of join in on the discussion here. We always love having you around, Steve. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be our fourth panelist every single week, just let us know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would have brought to the studio tonight, but my last one was down in Hyannis today, so oh, you were too close to it, home. We wouldn't have made it on time. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have any calls, do we ask that? Oh yeah, yeah. I just did that. Seven eight one eight three seven forty nine hundred. You gotta go home and take a nap. After this, go we're home. gonna go home and go to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steve, I did have a question though. I mean, I know the answer, but I'm gonna say it. So I went to a client's house recently, and they actually had to Mark McNamara actually put in a new water heater for them. And I went to the house. It's a friend of mine's uh, parents, and I went down to the basement just to sort of check out on some things because the water it had been. It was, it was awful by you the did way, the inspection. Oh yeah. You did the inspection over there yeah. in, in Whitman. Yeah. So, um, he put in a new water heater and I went down there and I was like, Hmm, is there a reason why you have insulation wrapped around your brand new water heater? And he's like, well, you know, that just keeps the heat in and keeps it, you know, more insulated. Can you give your thoughts on that? Because I know yeah, what I told like them. That. That's nice to do. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the hot water tanks are really insulated nicely today, but you put that extra blanket on the outside. And if you put it on there properly, especially if a gas one, a lot of people, you know, put it really down by the burner and overdo oh, that it. that would scare me. But if it's properly installed, you'll you'll save probably another fifteen to thirty dollars a year off your uh, generation of hot water. Well, because then I I remembered I told him actually to take it off because now you're gonna have to correct me. I'm gonna have to go over there and put it back on because I thought <laughs> that you had told me. And actually, Mark did verify this too. He said they're so well insulated now yep. that there's really no need for anyone to do that. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. He said. Yep. But the other thing is, is and I could it's one that you had said this too, and maybe it's just with the older ones that we see in the city that when you put that insulation around it that when moisture now gets in there you've sort of trapped the moisture between like the insulation in the tank so now you could rust it from the outside oh 100 that, that's what in. was happening when people were getting in there and they take duct tape and they just seal it yeah. up really tight but it's you know if, if you were to see a tank that's been insulated and take your hand and kind of put it between the insulation and the tank you'll feel how warm it is inside uh -huh. there so it does do uh you know quite a bit okay if you do it and then the other is insulating the pipes, you know, coming out of the mm -hmm. copper or the PEX pipes coming out of it, that saves mm -hmm. a considerable amount of, uh, you know, energy also by insulating the pipes. Yep. Absolutely. I know that Mark, a lot of time, I, it surprises me still that he gets like freeze ups still, you know, I don't know. Do people not listen to our show? <laughs> so like pipes bursting. Well, so this is, is that what you mean? Pipes first? Yeah. Well, they freeze and split, but it's just, it's surprising to me that in certain areas, like if somebody has a frog family room over garage, or they have a master bedroom over the garage, and then it seems to, you know, get the master bathroom, or if they have a bathroom over there, that the pipes are freezing there because it's underneath the garage. But mm -hmm. it's surprising to me that that would happen in this day and age that you happens, wouldn't know. Happens all the time. And I, that's one of the little spiels on the uh, home inspections. If you have like a two car on the garage, uh, and you have a bathroom or a room above it. When you open the garage doors, you know, if you're doing the driveway or something like that, don't leave them open for eight hours because what happens is that ceiling will cool down. The floors are always going to be cold. And if you have a bathroom above there, you still have your traps and your plumbing up there that are going to cool down also. And there's no heat being generated in the garage for mm -hmm. it to rise up to warm those pipes. So if you leave it open long enough, those pipes will tend to uh, freeze up. Hmm. See it all the time. And that's when you go like a raised ranch or, you know, garrison with a two car runda. You look at the ceilings, that the ceilings been cut open and patched. Chances are their pipes probably froze up and they didn't know it. They're snow blowing the driveway and they 
leave the oh. doors open for eight hours, 10 hours at a time. The kids are out there, you know, playing in the snow and you don't realize that everything's cooling down and you don't have any heat up there to uh, keep the pipes from freezing. Actually, that's a good point, though. Think about how many people have their generators in their garage and they pull them out and they just leave the garage door open, even though that's not a great idea in itself. But like, to, you know, I feel like it's not in the garage. It's, it's not just outside the just garage, outside the garage. But then they have the garage door open the whole entire time. You know, the our lights are out for three days. <laughs> garage doors open for three days. I right. saw this it's thing. outside. Great. But, you know, if it's, you know, 20 degrees or you know 10 degrees on the outside and you're doing that that's going to create you know more problems inside the home especially when you don't have everything running 100 percent. you're just doing the basics with the uh, generator hmm. what are some of the final like we have seven minutes it looks like here so um what are some of the bigger the bit best tips that you can give our listeners tonight on you know the best ways to prevent heat loss in the house i know we talked a little bit about it in the beginning but sort of yeah, summing best, it up a little the best resource is going to be mass safe is having you mm -hmm. know unless you're averse into looking at different things and uh, but mass safe will give you a stepping stone either you know to make recommendations and if you're handy you can do it yourself or you know getting someone in there and then you can kind of do you know weigh the pro and con on it whether or not uh that investment you know will you know pay off in two years or uh, five years of insulating the home but a lot of times i see and you've been on the inspections with me where the homeowner will over insulate the house and they'll get up there and they'll put you know an extra 10 inches on top of six inches of insulation they'll push it all the way out to the gutter area. So it's nice and tight up there. Now they're cutting off the ventilation from the uh, soffits okay. and things aren't breathing, you know, breathing up there properly. And then all of a sudden you start getting portobello mushrooms growing up there. You get mold, mold <laughs> all sorts of funky <laughs> things happening up in the attic there. So then mm -hmm. you know, one of the good telltale signs, if you go to a house and you look where the gutters are, and if you look at the overhang below the gutters, a lot of times you get in there they're black or they're discolored on that, that usually means they either have poor ventilation or someone pushed the insulation up over that soffit area. And you should- Oh, have that's a good one. I didn't know that. Mm. Or beyond the actual wall of the house. You want that soffit area to be open and either, you know, some sort of soffit venting or a drip edge vent or something to allow that to breathe and dry out. And uh, that's the best mm. way to keep it. And, and I actually saw that- Styrofoam panels that they put in there to help prevent that too. What are those called? I forget what baffles? those are. Baffles, yeah, right? Baffles? Little baffles. baffles. Yeah. Well, I saw that one time in a cape. Um, so we're not up in the attic, so to speak, but you know, in the cape and they have sort of the eaves in the yeah. front. And I remember it was actually on Plymouth Street and underneath it was just loaded with mold. And that's exactly what the homeowner had done. He saw the light coming through from the soffit vents. So he thought it would be a good idea to like, no put, light, no light, put insulation on all of it. And then we ended up with a mold issue. Yeah. You know, one of the other things, Steve, that I remember when I used to be the one out there with you doing these home inspections. <laughs> remember that do one? You, I used do, to you show miss, do you miss him? <laughs> Yeah. I remember that. that was that last year, right? <laughs> that was last year. I've done a couple of okay. uh, whatever. But I remember um before you saying this it's great that they did all this insulation, but they put the insulation in backwards or upside down. Can you explain the best way? Well, two two parts of this question. Best way, what is the correct way to put the insulation in, the paper in, the paper out? And there are all types of different insulation. When I was watching that commercial this morning, it's like, it seems like the blow-in insulation seems to be the thing. Why would someone choose that over the rolled pink stuff? Right, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a proponent of the you know, traditional type of insulation, whether it be blown silos or that rolled out stuff or the loose, um, but the vapor barrier, which is always like that paper side, always mm -hmm. goes toward the heated area. If you just remember that one thing, the paper always goes toward the heated area. It'll never mix it up. So if you're down in the basement, the heated area is going to be the floors above you. So that vapor barrier is going to go up. And if you're up in the attic, you know, and you're insulating the, you know, rafter area, you know, on the ceiling joist there, you want the paper to go down toward the ceilings in the room that's below you. Okay. So you have big red letters on it too. Apply me this way. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you missed it. So too case, many, but too many it is people. easier to install with the paper the wrong way, but you want to have it well, the right way. A lot of times it doesn't time. cause a problem, but if you have something, you know, we have a crawl space uh, and you put six inches in, you have, you know, six inch joist and the vapor varies the wrong way, that's going to promote uh, moisture and all sorts of uh, bad things happen down there. 
All right, so up in the attic, you should have it on the floor of the attic, which would be the roof, the ceiling of the second floor, right? right. If you think so that would be wall, paper wall, down. Paper down. Yep. So you okay. want to trap the heat in the attended area, which would be the rooms below the yeah. ceilings. So okay. now what about, do you do the roofs? I don't, I don't even know that you don't even do the roofs, right? You don't know. You don't want to trap it in the attic area. You want to trap yeah. it in the you know room the that's you know, designed to hold the heat. And as you were just saying, that paper or the vapor barrier should always be facing the heated area of the house, which would be mm -hmm. the ceilings for the, uh, you know, for that floor, whether it be the first floor or a second mm -hmm. floor of the home. It's interesting in the front of my house, there's sort of like this, it's almost like a dog door type thing, you know, that's, I know that there's no, ins I don't think there's any insulation on the whole front wall of my house because it, when it's really windy and it's really cold out, you can literally feel cold coming out of the light fixture, like the light electrical thing on the wall. Yeah. And when like you go switch. in that, yeah. And then there's like a, there's a, which one call it a, <laughs> There's a closet there as well. And when you open the closet, I hate putting my coats in there because my coats are so cold when I take them out. So I know there's no insulation in there, but how do you find out? And how do you get it in there now that it's locked up? Yeah, you could you have someone just do one of those tests, like a floor or something that will let you know what's going on. But you got the floor, you got to come over. Yeah, if you change the, you know, the door over to a louvered door rather than the solid door, that will allow a little bit of heat from that room to go inside there. Yeah, no, I'm not looking at a louvered door ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So it uh, looks like we have three minutes. Melissa, do you want to tell all of our listeners about how they can find our past shows and all that good stuff? Yeah, you can find all of our past shows at talkrealestateroundtable.com. You can find them on your podcast app, whichever you prefer. We're on iTunes and Spotify. Um, you can go to bostonconnect.com and uh, get all of our contact information. Steve, please give all of your contact information to our listeners. We have about 10 seconds left. Sure. Yeah, to reach us, our number is 1-800-440-1141. Again, 1-800-440-1141. Perfect. And Thank if you, you need to get in touch with Steve and you didn't get that number, our number is a little easier. 781-826-8000. We'll be sure to get you over to Steve. Steve, thank you so much for last minute. Always oh, being there for us. We appreciate anytime. you and all you do for yeah. us and our clients here at Boston Connector Real Estate. Have a great day and happy yeah, holidays. Have a good night. Bye, Bye, Bye. Steve. Thank you. Bye. my words <laughs> yeah you you I'm you like, kind of um I think you're sleepy